Rich in moisturizing or light in cleansing, make the perfect shampoo for your hair. Today we're making real shampoos, so this is a tutorial that you don't want to miss. Hi guys and welcome to Hold Elise. I'm Elise and as always you can find the full recipes on my website holdelise.com. So let's just get straight into it. Our first shampoo is a sulfate free clarifying shampoo that won't strip your hair. This shampoo is amazing for when you just need something that cleans your hair. If you use heavier products like gels, butters and hair grease, all of that can cause buildup. So it is great to use a clarifying shampoo every now and again, just to make sure that you're starting off with a clean base. A basic shampoo has three main components, a water base, cleansing agent and a thickener. But that can be a one way street to dry fill. So using floral waters and hydrosols will give our shampoo a moisturizing boost as well as a lovely fragrance without having to use oils. Measure out your water base. I'm using lavender hydrosol, but you can use any that you'd like, or you can even make your own following my tutorial above. A little goes a long way, so I'm also diluting this with water. Now to cleanse our hair and scalp, we're using surface active agents or surfactants for short. They work by attracting both water and oil molecules therefore allowing your shampoo to wash away dirt, debris, buildup and excess oils. I'm using Decal Glucoside, which is my go-to mild natural surfactant that won't strip your hair. This cleanser is even used in baby products, so you can't get much milder than that. I explain more about surfactants here, so click the icon above for more information on natural cleansers and how to choose the right one for you. We're also going to use another surfactant, Coco Betaine. It boosts our shampoo's conditioning powers, reduces irritation, but also creates a rich, thick lather. So full disclosure, for a really basic shampoo recipe, you can of course just use one surfactant. But if you love that rich and creamy lather, then you will need to use a secondary surfactant or a foam booster. And that's what the Coco Butane does. We'll also need to measure out glycerin and guar gum. Guar gum, like Xantam, is a natural thickener, but we're using it here more for its conditioning properties. It's common for clarifying shampoos to cause knotting and tangles in our hair because they don't have any conditioning elements. Mix the guar gum and the glycerin first together to make it easier to disperse evenly into the water mixture. Guar gum is unique as it coats your coils, laying the cuticle flat and helping with detangling. Once the guar gum is mixed in, we can then add the surfactants. Pour in the decal glucoside and coco betaine and whisk. We're actually making our shampoo by hand, so all you'll need is a regular whisk. You could use an immersion blender, but due to the surfactants it will foam, so I'd actually recommend skipping it. At this point we've made a good shampoo, but it's not yet a great one. Even though the mild surfactants used will make sure that the clarifying shampoos don't give us that unpleasant squeaky feeling, we can still add in a few more moisturising elements to further protect our hair. By adding in active ingredients like botanical extracts, proteins, humectants and vitamins, this gives your clarifying shampoo some moisturising capabilities. These are optional, but it also makes sure that the shampoo isn't too stripping on your hair. Ingredient number one is D-Panthenol, also known as vitamin B5. I give it a formal introduction in my DIY Shea Moisture Deep Conditioning tutorial, so check that out by the link above for more information. But essentially, it's a powerful conditioner, moisturizer and anti-static agent that gives your hair that signature sheen and bounce. Next up we have protein, also essential for strengthening damaged and weakened hair strands, but also draws moisture into your curls, increasing its elasticity, making it less vulnerable to dryness and breakage. Pour both of these into your shampoo base and mix thoroughly. Next up, everyone's favorite part, preserving. I'm using a broad spectrum preservative that's going to protect your shampoo from mold, bacteria and fungi. This is incredibly important, as the last thing you want to do is go through all of the effort of making a great shampoo, only to see it decay in a matter of days. At this stage, we can adjust the pH of our shampoo. For this, you'll need some citric acid, which you can buy in most supermarkets. 
To balance the pH, you can also use something like apple cider vinegar. In fact, I do this in my previous African black soap shampoo tutorial. The only difference is that citric acid is so much more potent because it's far more acidic than vinegar, meaning that you only need a tiny sprinkle in order to balance your pH. Surfactants, soaps and other cleansers tend to have high pH values that make them effective cleansers but also irritating to our skin. By adding in something acidic, we can change the pH so that it's more in line with our scalps. We're adding such a small amount, it's likely that it won't show up on most scales. So go slow and add citric acid bit by bit to make sure that you don't overdo it. A pH of around 5 to 6 is within good range for most shampoos. So you may have noticed, but our shampoo is still quite liquid. To elevate this from a DIY shampoo to the ultimate shampoo, we're going to need a couple cc's of thickness. Measure out 0.5% xanthan gum along with more glycerin. Guar gum is great for texture and conditioning, but I find it easier to thicken liquids with xanthan gum. Like before, mix the xanthan with the glycerin before adding it to our shampoo. You can always add more, but you can't take away, so start with a small amount first. Natural gums can take a full 24 hours to thicken a liquid, so even if it seems a little on the thin side initially, it will continue to thicken after it's had time to sit. Pour the tantum into our shampoo and whisk thoroughly. And I mean thoroughly. You want to make sure that there are absolutely no lumps. Once that's done, wait a couple minutes and use a spoon to check that it's thickened. Even though it's still runny, you can see that it's slightly thicker. Now wait some more. Just five minutes later and look at the difference. Stop here. I know it's tempting to add more. I myself have been down that road before, but it's not worth it. For this formula, I've only used 0.5% xanthan gum, and you can see that even though it's still liquid, it's definitely thickened. I'd say that you can go up to about 1%, but I definitely wouldn't recommend adding any more than that. The difference between 0.5 and 1% xanthan gum is huge. For those in the back that still want to add more, look what happens when I add just two tiny grams more of xanthan gum. Not too bad, right? Well, that is how it tricks you. One hour later and it looks like this. Pure slime. Many a shampoo have been lost to Xantum's cruel nature, so you've been warned. But when used right, you'll end up with this crystal clear, ultra silky clarifying shampoo that gently cleans but doesn't strip your hair. Next up, we have a rich and moisturizing conditioning shampoo. When it comes to natural hair, using more conditioning and moisturizing shampoos are the best way to ensure that your hair isn't stripped of its natural oils. So this conditioning shampoo formula is perfect to use for a regular wash day. To keep things simple, it has virtually the same base as the clarifying shampoo. So if you can make one, you can also make the other. Measure out the hydrosol and water, glucoside, cocoa betaine, glycerin and guar gum. Like before, mix the guar gum and glycerin together before adding it to the water base. Next, add the decal glucoside and cocoa betaine to form the water phase of your shampoo. And once everything's mixed together, here's where it starts to get interesting. So this is where injecting knowledge of your own hair will give you the best results. Ideally, you want to use whichever oil works best for your hair to get the most out of this moisture boost. If it's jojoba, argan oil, olive oil, castor oil, whatever it is, use that here. Measure out your oil. I'm using coconut oil. And then to make sure that the oil mixes in with your shampoo and doesn't just sit on the top, we'll need an emulsifier. But not just any emulsifier. The ultra slip and conditioning natural hair's best friend BTMS emulsifying wax. For added stabilization, it's always a good idea to throw in a fatty alcohol. I'm using cetyl alcohol. Once everything's measured out, add the coconut oil, BTMS, and cetyl alcohol to a heat proof container so that we can melt it down. This moisturizing shampoo is an emulsion so we'll need to heat our water and oil ingredients separately before combining them together. Over a low, gentle heat, melt until no solids remain, and then whisk the molten oils into the shampoo base.
Now this is usually where I'd reach for my trusty immersion blender. But as I said before, it's actually easier to whisk this by hand to avoid the surfactants foaming too much. Whisk routinely as it cools to ensure that it's emulsified fully. After about 5 minutes, you should have a silky smooth, slightly thickened shampoo. Like with the clarifying shampoo, adding in a couple extras like pamphanol and protein will help to keep your hair at its best. I won't force you, but I'm just saying. For me, the balance between being cleansing but not overly drying is just right with these two shampoos. But it's a good idea to always test out a product first and do a patch test before applying it to your hair. At this point, we can add our preservatives. Notice the S on the end of that? You'll need to use a broad spectrum preservative like before, but also an antioxidant because we added oils to make this a moisturizing shampoo. Check your pH and sprinkle some of that citric acid to bring your shampoo back to a well-seasoned 5 pH range. And after another good mix, you'll have this gorgeously smooth ultra conditioning shampoo. And now for some of those finishing shots you've been waiting for. A little bit of patience pays off, as both the clarifying and conditioning shampoos are noticeably thicker after a couple hours to create this super satisfying final texture. For me, the balance between being cleansing but not overly drying is just right with these two shampoos, but it's a good idea to always test out a product first and do a patch test before applying it to your hair. It's always a good idea to test out just how stripping a shampoo is going to be before applying it to your hair. So a hack that I've been doing for a while now is to actually wash my hands with the shampoo. Now that might sound weird, but if you get that overly dry feeling on your hands, then that's a pretty good indicator that the shampoo is going to be too stripping on your hair. Don't forget to check out holdalise.com for the full recipes and subscribe for even more hair and skincare tutorials.